Hi, I'm Karen Mackey. I'm a working artist and I like to work with um, raising awareness of social justice issues for women and ecological issues for cultural well-being within community. For five years, I curated the Earth Spirit Festival, where women use story and art to explore their inner consciousness, relationship to others and their place in the cosmos. Currently, I'm working towards completing my doctoral studies with the Institute for Culture and Society at the University of Western Sydney in Australia. In January 2013, I was appointed full-time lecturer at the University of Western Sydney, where I teach in the areas of diversity, social justice and equity, sustainability and creativity and learning. This video focuses on how women from a community arts group in the Blue Mountains, Australia, used art in their search for deepened understanding of their spiritual self and explore contemporary challenges in their daily lives. 63 women's artworks and stories from the Ancestral Connections exhibition held in 2009 and 10 interviews with women artists informed the research. research clearly demonstrates how and why some women engage in art making as a powerful way to transform aspects of their lives.
As an example of how art is related to the spiritual experience, I recall a walk on my favourite beach which highlights how the emotional experiential moment was pivotal in my quest to understanding how and why art was made by the women from the women's room for a sense of well-being. As I walked the long stretch of beach, I was suddenly struck by a powerful insight that seemed to come out of nowhere. I knew I had to remember it. I had no paper or pen, but I did have my camera. So I wrote it in the sand with a piece of driftwood and took a photo. It said, art as a reminder of connections with the divine. Another thought instantly rushed in, so I hurriedly wrote this down in case it evaporated and was lost forever. It said, art as a reminder of who we are. In this moment, I felt as if my life force was shimmering, like hot air rising on the horizon, that my inside energy was reverberating, so it expanded to further than my usual bodily limits. It felt good, whole. Everything made perfect sense and I felt connected with something else beyond, within and around me. It was as if time was frozen, but I was aware of this feeling of elation. As I continued on my walk, I wondered if the women I was researching had moments like this when making art. Once I returned home, I felt compelled to create a painting in an effort to capture this wonderful, powerful experience. In making the artwork, especially while spreading large sections of the paint with my hands, I also experienced a sense of being within and becoming one with the paint, the rough textured linen canvas, the vibrant colours, in a connection with something that I would later call the divine energy. The emerging imagery helped me to remember the feeling I had whilst walking on the beach, even though it wasn't the same feeling. When I experienced this painting later, I realised that the giving and receiving of the starfish between a human and an anthropomorphised headland goddess had unconsciously captured the idea of a reciprocal relationship between a physical reality and a spiritual energy. The making of this artwork made my spiritual experience visible and was a way for me to capture a complex array of thoughts, insights and emotions that streamed into my consciousness in a moment of connection to an invisible energy force that was within and around me. By memorialising this momentary experience through the painting, my initial and subsequent experiences could be remembered, relived and reworked at another time with the possibility of instigating another artwork or another moment of connection, or further dialogue with the divine energy in an iterative way. Art in the making moment can be a powerful process of transformation where strong emotions are experienced, released and pain transmuted into a sense of hopefulness. Art in the making moment may elicit connections to energy so powerfully evocative and memorable that they act as agents of change which may set into motion new physical and emotional journeys of discovery. These moments of immediate connection give a certain clarity that does not require interpretation from an expert, but instead are experiences of inner knowing, engendering trust in women's own ability to work through disappointments, challenges or joys experienced in life. Karen works best when she is surrounded by her family at the kitchen table using her repetitive ritual process of doing the dot where she communicates with her ancestors and becomes closer to God to everything. Her universe is contained in the making of each dot. 
When I paint, it's like a meditation for me. There is something pure about that, not only the dot itself, how it looks, but the process of doing the dot. There is something that calms me. I am closer to that feeling, like I am closer to God. I am just closer to everything. I am aware of every single dot. I am painting especially for someone. I am meditating on people and love and emotion. The painting of the dot is a synergistic coming together of all that she is in her relationships within community, her Aboriginality, her spirituality and her connection with the energy of everything in the cosmos. Similarly, Mary says that when I do my art, I'm in this what I call a different dimension where I am just absorbed in the work. I have my music on, I have my tea after tea, because the music is what inspires me and just the creation, the creation from nothing to something. It's almost like strange, but like the piece comes alive. It sort of communicates. Many artists have already discussed a ritual process in art making to engage with the spiritual, such as Orenstein, Henley, De Zyger, and Salias. However, the art making of the women in this study moved beyond carrying out ritual actions to an important communicative potential with an animated energy within the artwork. When the women use repetitive actions such as continuous brush strokes, their hands, dot marking, boiling a kettle, making a cup of tea, or listening to music, they experienced a meditative state which elicited a flow of oneness with their artwork. Mary's ritual actions allowed a dissipation of boundaries between herself and her artwork, which gave her access to a rich, unconscious nexus of her life experiences, and that inspired her creation. The really important thing about what the divine was for these women and where it did seem to cross over as being similar for each of them was that it was not a being. It wasn't um, one thing. It was always explained in terms of energy. And lots of different names were given to that energy, like ancestors, um, like the earth. But most, mostly women called it energy and divine energy. And this is a really important distinction when we're talking in terms of feminist theology. Because in feminist theology, the divine has always been constructed as um, a strictly female being and force. These women weren't interested in being a strictly female divine force. They weren't interested in describing this. They were interested in feeling this, in experiencing this. The women in the study were not fixated on quantifying the divine as a being, but were instead interested in describing the feeling and the force that they experienced as divine. Rather than being a universal experience, women had different experience of tapping into this force, different intensities, levels and different cultural meanings attached to what they thought was divine. Through the process of making art, women were able to reflect upon aspects of their lives and question and incorporate their own cultural constructs of divine. The direct experience of the divine seemed to occur at an unexpected moment when women were walking in nature, on the street, in their kitchen or looking up at the stars. And it was a peaceful, calm, beautiful experience where the self was felt to be expansive. Three women describe how an experience of the divine feels for them. Amy says, Where your presence flows outside of your physical body but is still attached, you feel bigger than yourself. Mary says, I get this incredible, I don't know what to put it, I'm standing, it is usually at the kitchen, at the kitchen bench, and it is like a stretching feeling of this beautiful, beautiful thing that happens to me. I feel tall. It is in me and it stretches me and I sort of feel like I am looking down, that I am this elongated spirit or, and yet, of course I haven't grown, I just feel like something stretching me. And Diane, when the feeling came upon me, I felt as if my perception had changed. I saw and felt reality as it really is rather than used to seeing it. 
that was connection with the divine, emotional and physical. The emotions of that experience were exquisite. I felt joy, peace and serenity. I knew there were no opposites. All was one, all was good. Art in the making moment is a process of receiving divine energy flow, giving of the self in the making of an artwork and then offering the work up to be received by others. The life force encapsulated in the divine energy and transformed into art is simultaneously a woman's but not hers, embodied but not static, as if it is infinitely present and imminent. Not all women wanted to talk about art being captured and the energy of art being captured. Viba wanted to talk about art being a dialogue and this is part of what she says. When I paint it's like my innermost soul is connected to the divine but it is like a relationship between two people. It is an interaction and it is a combination of both the individual and the divine. Each individual will have a unique relationship with the divine and will be expressed in a different way. For me, the painting grounds that oneness and it makes it practical and tangible instead of being esoteric. You can see and feel rather than it not be expressible. The grounding is different and you are not capturing it. It is your relationship with it, your beliefs about it and your questions about it. All of the women that I interviewed talked about the divine moment of being in uh, the flow of life as a positive experience and they use their art making as a way to remember the connections to the divine flow of life within ourselves, within others and within the cosmos and this made them feel whole, healed, loved and less isolated. Amy talked about how she felt connections being activated in her brain when she was creatively engaged and she said, when I'm not doing it, I feel like something is missing, doors are closed, and that she felt it was important to keep the life force going. Karen talks about it as being medicine, and she talks about how that she feels less isolated when she's painting. She says, uh, I never, when I paint, I never feel lonely. I feel nice and relaxed. I feel like I have people. It is my energy that I put into it, and I want to pass on to humanity. It is my way of loving, really. Karen explains that when she's giving someone a painting, she's not giving them just paint on a canvas, but she's giving them energy that she's put into that canvas, into the paint that she's experienced during the making of that painting. Similar to Raphael, who used art making and weaving to recast a unique female sacrality, art making in, for these women was really more about grounding themselves in their own lives. It assisted women from diverse backgrounds to untangle and reconstruct their own multifaceted cultural identities and sense of belonging. The making of stories, art, and experiencing spiritual practice enabled women to connect to their inner life and question the meaning of important aspects of their life such as birth, motherhood, bloodline connections, adoption, relationships, their ethnicity, their spiritual beliefs and their constructions of nature. The art making nexus may have begun with a personal exploration but this was nested within larger questions of belonging and connecting to a local community and place cultural identity and cosmos. Cheryl sums this up beautifully by talking about her connections and connectedness. She says, we are all connected to the earth. I think we are all connected to each other. I think we are all connected to everything but the groundedness is the solidness to remind us that there is solidness within myself as well. So I don't know that I would say that the earth is divine. I think we all are. 
I think we all have the nature of the divine. I don't think there is something out there somewhere that includes earth. I think we all have it. So I think that it is just as much to connect with everything, but to also connect with what is within, to the earth within me. I think the earth remembers. The earth is the thing that constantly reminding us that we are all connected. But I don't think we remember all the time. Finally, art as a connection to the divine was a way for women to challenge the dominant ideologies that have marginalised women's experiences. The art making moment in divine connectedness provided a synergistic space for women to process conflicts, often disparate emotions, sensations and current knowing, which enabled women to consider other possibilities or make connections that may not have previously been considered. There was a strong sense that the process of making art, when in the flow of life, was a way for women to remember their own power within, their own divinity. Making art in connection with the divine was empowering for women as it made their innermost thoughts and feelings visible, where in the past they may have had to have been silent. Art making gave women a space to process emotions, explore who they were, share their story, be listened to, connect with other women in a community and not feel so alone. Connection to the divine energy of life moved women deeply and was overwhelmingly reported as a positive experience of oneness, peace of calmness, where the creative process contributed to a sense of cultural belonging and well-being. Art making can be a way for women to express their belonging to place, to feel a connection to the inner being and the energy that animates all that is in the cosmos. Not by becoming a divine being, but by experiencing the divine energy of life in the art making process. What the women of this study have shown me, along with my own experiential learning, is that art can be a mediator between the self and the divine energy that has the power to capture a glimpse of a greater all-encompassing energy or life flow. Finally, the making of art was able to ground the divine energy that women experienced that was flowing through all of us, that they experienced as flowing through life itself. The art making experience was a reminder of their own creative potential and their own place in the cosmos. Art was one way of receiving joy, peace and wholeness experienced in the divine moment of connection. When this is then the giving into the artwork an emotional energy that may then be captured but also received when someone viewed the artwork later. Art as a connection to the divine was not necessarily a way to become divine but experience the synergistic nexus running through life at a moment in time. It was a creative process exploring one's being and location in time and surrounding cosmos.